24 years ago, I played GoldenEye on the N64 and I fell in love with the AK-47. Fast forward to today and it's still my go-to in Call of Duty. They're loud, they have lots of stopping power and it takes some serious thumb skill to control that recoil. But it's not just the rifle I find captivating. It's the mystery of that faraway land where it comes from. The Russian nesting dolls, the track suits, the vodka, the mail order bride. Sadly, the AK-47 is prohib in Canada and I'm not allowed to review it for you guys. But guess what comrades, I have here a Type 81. It may not be from Russia, but it's the closest thing to an AK I'm allowed to shoot. And because they look so darn similar, well, I'm gonna treat this review as if it were an AK-47. So slap on your gold chains, squeeze into your Adidas track suits and load up your fanny pack with 762 by 39. Cause today we're looking at the Naranko Type 81. At first glance into the untrained eye, the Type 81 looks like an AK. But just like that lovely lady you met in Thailand, looks can be deceiving. The Type 81 is actually based off the AK and SKS rifle actions. The Type 81 has since been replaced, but it still sees service in the Reserve Army and Armed Police Forces. So what is it? Well, the Type 81 is a gas-operated, mag-fed, semi-automatic rifle. Allegedly, it was designed to have a longer service life, higher accuracy, and improved durability. Today's focus is on the Type 81 LMG. This was essentially an infantry support version of the original Type 81. <laughs> this guy here. I will cover the difference between these two rifles in the cool feature section. Well, let's take a closer look at the Type 81 LMG. <laughs> I'd like to make something super clear. These are new production rifles. These were not made in the 80s and then buried up until today. These are all 2017 or newer production. This particular one here is 2020. So the caliber of this guy is 7.62 by 39. Our magazine capacity is five rounds, of course. Our action type is semi-automatic. It operates on a short stroke gas piston that you can adjust really easy. Do you want, I'm gonna show them that right now, actually. Travis, pass me around. So you take a round, seat it in here. I can go from one to zero to two. Real easy, real quick. We have a fixed stock here, looking quite sharp in its wooden communist uniform. So like I mentioned earlier, the Type 81 is essentially a mashup of the AK and the SKS. Rather than go through all the features that they stole from each, I'm gonna list them right here for you guys. Now here's a fun fact. No parts from the AK-47 are interchangeable or replaceable or compatible on this guy here. That's what keeps this rifle non-restricted. That's what keeps it out of the Prohib category. The cool features portion, I am going to, instead of listing just cool features, compare this guy to the regular Type 81 model and show you the differences. <laughs> First difference, you have a thicker and longer barrel on the LMG model. The idea behind this is better accuracy during sustained fire, which I guess would be a thing if this magazine weren't pinned at five. Your Type 81 LMG has an integral bipod right here. This is different from the regular model, which actually has a bayonet mount underneath the front sight right here. No bayonet mount on this one here. If you look here at the front sights, you'll see that the front sight was actually moved to the end of the barrel on the LMG model. That was for a longer sight radius, which means more accuracy. Uh, given the lackluster performance of the 7.62 round, I'm not really sure that the longer sight radius and improved accuracy is going to be a thing you'll notice with your rifle. Just saying. You have a top folding carry handle, making it a little bit easier to carry this 10 pounds around into battle. It is removable, by the way. You guys take a look at the rear stock here. It has been changed to a club foot style. This is to make shooting from a prone position easier by placing your support hand right in there, right in that notch there. Look how short this is. Now that we know what this gun's all about, let's see what's in the box. And what is in the box? Your Norenko Type 81 LMG is gonna come in a box like this. Rifle is in a plastic bag completely soaked with oil. Two 30 round magazines, both pinned at five. You have a tiny oil bottle here, quality certificate here, along with the date of manufacture. Now I left it just like it is when you purchase it so I can help put into perspective just how oily this thing is. Look how shiny that is. Okay, your rifle is absolutely disgusting out of the box. I am talking oily and 
oily and more oily. Your bipod comes already attached to the rifle and it goes without saying your rifle will require some cleaning to get that oil off before you fire it. We all know the AK has a reputation for unstoppable reliability and this rifle is built off that design. So let's grab a crate of cheap ammo and see if this red rifle can get the gold star its big brother has. We are done shooting the Type 81. I've got a lot to say. Instead of pros, cons, and verdict, I think I'm gonna describe this more as things I enjoyed and things I found a little bit annoying about the gun. All right, here is the first thing I like. Ammo is easy to find and it's relatively inexpensive. 762 by 39 is sold at most stores and it's almost always cheap. Here's a tip though. If you guys are buying it, make sure it doesn't have a steel core. A lot of ranges don't allow ammo with steel core to be shot indoors. It does too much damage. Let's leave it at that. Second thing I really liked was the reliability. I didn't have a single stoppage. We shot a ton of ammo today, not one stoppage. Nothing, not with the stick mags, not with the drum mag, no stoppages at all. This is gonna go in my pro category, uh, but it's also gonna go in my con category, which is kind of weird, but the carry handle and the bipod are both removable. I found them to get in the way quite often because I was often shooting standing up. If you're laying down prone, I guess that makes sense. But for me, I never really used them. So I found them to get in the way. I like that you can take them off. Some of you guys that don't clean their rifles very often will like that it has an adjustable, easy to find gas piston system. So if the rifle's gumming itself up, it's not cycling properly, you can easily just crank up that gas system and hopefully that'll solve the problem. Pro, that's really all I got. There aren't a ton of pros with this thing. Ugh, sorry. Now here are some things I found annoying. The first thing I did not like about the rifle was the ergonomics. Both the stock and the pistol grip are designed for, I believe, shorter people. It's more of a Frodo Baggins type rifle. This thing is super short. The pistol grip is super short. I was, I was getting so close to this thing. True story. I damaged my other sunglasses because I found that uh, the receiver banged back against the glass. And if you guys were hoping that you could interchange some AK parts, like a cool uh, Zukov stock or something on this, uh, no, no AK parts fit on this. Not even Magpul furniture. Again, the ergonomics department, does that look comfortable? No, there's no rubber, there's no nothing. This is just metal on, on wood. Hey, I, dude, I could easily, I could, I could rest it right here. That's how my glasses got f***ed up, right? That's how I'm gonna f*** up these glasses. Another thing I found annoying, the carry handle is always in the way. I found either it was way up here above my sight picture, or it was right down here touching my support hand as I fired the rifle. I hated this. I know that you can remove it, but out of the box, it just seems annoying to me. Bipod, that's also gonna go in this category. This thing here is fairly flimsy as you shoot, and I found that it bumped into my support hand quite often. I know it's removable, I know there's a use for it, but I just don't like it. Show them that, Brandon. That's what I see when I fire. Sounds like I'm shaking Smarties. This thing costs $1,500. This thing is a $1,500 rifle. That is gonna go in this category because it's just too damn expensive for what it is. Here's one more. Well, actually there's quite a few more. Your charging handle here is designed for one finger, just one finger, as opposed to the AK style where I can kind of get two on there. It's, it's a big curved charging handle. This thing here is just straight out and it's just one finger design. It's real easy to miss that in a hurry. Okay, I did not love this trigger. If you're expecting anything other than a long, spongy, unpredictable trigger pull, you're gonna be disappointed because it's all those things. I have to touch on the sights for a huge con and this is like probably my biggest con. Your sight picture sucks. This sight picture with these AK style sights or whatever these are is annoying at best, especially through recoil impulse. It is super hard to stay on target. And the unfortunate thing is there is no optic mount for this gun right now. So you can't put a scope on or a red dot or something like that. You are stuck using these iron sights. The weight, this thing is heavy. You guys uh, didn't get to see most of my complaining throughout the video, but 
Every time I wasn't shooting this, I just found this to be a big, heavy annoyance to lug around the range. I, I would rather buy the original non-LMG just to avoid the weight, which mostly comes from this barrel. Yeah, I guess it is well balanced. Look at that. Yeah, it's not bad. Your magazine release is gonna be a lot further forward than you find in an AK. That's due to the longer receiver. So if you guys are used to uh, knocking your mags out right here in front of the trigger guard with your mag release, well, it's pushed way out there. Maybe that's easier for some, maybe it's harder. It's just, it's interesting. Last on my list, your safety selector here is a full 180 degree turn. So if you guys are used to an AR style, just quick flip, well, this is a lot different and it's gonna take some getting used to. I am just tearing this rifle apart with these cons, oh my goodness. So these are my final thoughts on the Type 81 LMG. The rifle shot well, it was, it was reliable for sure and it was decently accurate. It felt okay in my hands, not great. I developed a slight affection towards the rifle by the end of the day based solely on the reliability and the ease of function. Nothing else, just based on those two things. I, I really did like those things and I appreciated them. Despite the rifle's shortcomings, it has proven to be one of the most appealing options out there for a semi-automatic, non-restricted rifle in Canada right now. But, but, but it's definitely not for everyone. The price tag alone on this guy here at $1,500 is in my opinion, just too high. But hey, if you're in the market for that AK looking rifle, well, this isn't a bad choice. Let's just wrap this up. So my rating on this guy here is gonna be Six and a half hammer and sickles out of 10. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Please support our channel. We want to keep bringing you quality Canadian gun content.